Hi everyone, so last lesson um, was doing some of that change of components of a vector under change of basis example there and uh, said that I would work it out in a little more detail. So it's kind of got a little bit stuck looking at my notes there. So <clears throat> worked it out and uh, we'll go through it here. So we had some vector v which in components was equal to vi gi for the basis of vectors g i going from 1 to n and that was equal to vi prime fi like that well we had <clears throat> this matrix A of the components of the elements of Fi relative to the G basis. So that Vi gi is equal to <clears throat> vi prime a i j g j so there's this Kronecker delta symbol delta delta ij and that is equal to 1 whenever i is equal to j and 0 when i is not equal to j. <clears throat> so uh, a consequence of that is say we have a j delta i j well, that's 0, except for when i is equal to j. So that is equal to a i. <clears throat> so if we have a matrix and multiply it by its inverse, then you'll get delta i j in index form. You know, that'll be ones along the diagonal, as it were. So if we had a i j times a inverse j k then that is equal to delta i k All right, so going back to our equation up here that we're going to be manipulating, um, it ends up being a little easier if we kind of change some of the indices around. Um, so we'll look at it as instead of vi, gi, it's going to end up being a little easier if we go v j g j is equal to <coughs> v prime i a i j 
J G J. So now we're going to factor out a G J and look at the Jth component of this expression. So there will be, you know, n of these components that are going to be indexed by j. So j will be a free index. All right, so when we do that, we get v j is equal to v i prime a i j, like that. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to multiply both sides. By A inverse. JK. So that's going to make K our free index now. So we have A inverse JK times VJ. So if you look at the order of the indices here, we can see that this is actually A inverse transpose acting on this list of the J um, components there. V i prime, that's not a good prime there, huh? <coughs> a i j, a j k inverse. All right, so that looks like A inverse J K V J is equal to V I prime. And then we can combine these two here into delta I K. So like I said, k is the free index. And this term here is 0 whenever i is not equal to k. So this is equal to v k prime. And so this is already complete now, but usually just kind of conventionally, we tend to like i to be the free index if there's going to be one, or if there's going to be two free indices. We kind of like i, j, k, etc. to be the free indices, um, or at least give them priority for it, um, or at least I do. 
you don't necessarily have to do it that way. But for me, at least, it makes it easier to avoid making mistakes. So we'll just switch out k for i in this whole expression. So we have a inverse j i v j is equal to v prime i. All right, well, let's make this here. We're going to take the transpose there so that it's the normal order of, you know, row ordered matrix vector multiplication or well, matrix column vector multiplication. So the column vector is not, you know, the same as a member of the vector space. It's just the column vector of the, uh, the list of components there. But what that'll give us is vi prime is equal to a inverse transpose i j v j <clears throat> and so that's the way that we kind of you know wanted it to end up looking um, and you run into that a lot when you're doing manipulation with um, index notation it's a very powerful tool but you know you end up until you already know how to get where you're looking to go. Um, you tend to multiply a bunch of terms with indices and then get indices that are free that you don't want to be what you use as the free index. So in practice, you know, you end up switching which indices are what a whole bunch of times. Like you'll swap out I for some other unused one and then end up switching it back to something else at the end. Um, and you just have to be consistent about it. And when you, when you say, okay, I want, say, k to be i, you need to make sure that i isn't already used or you'll end up with, um, you know, something that's repeated more than twice, which um, would violate the, the rules of the summation convention. And they're not rules just, you know, to be rules. They're, um, they're because the summation convention is implying, right, that the summation convention is implying that you are expressing a vector as the sum over all of the basis elements of the component in the direction of that basis element times that basis element. So you're always making a vector from its components relative to a basis and a basis. Um, so there can only be, you know, one pairing between component and basis element. Uh, that's why you can't have, you know, three or four repeated indices in, you know, the same expression. All right, that's it for this one. I'll get another full lecture posted soon here. Hope you guys all had a good weekend and excited for Labor Day weekend coming up in a few days here. I know it's uh, probably not as exciting as usual since we don't get to go to beaches and do all sorts of fun, but hopefully you at least come up with something fun to do. Catch you later.